first aired on YouTube July 14, 2022 under the KTT account. What you see here is what I got after graduating from junior high in June of 2022. It consists of 5 Dell Optiplex 9010 desktops, 1GB PC, 3 Dell monitors, 1 widescreen view Sonic monitor, and 1 monitor from BenQ. These were given to me as the staff didn't want these things anymore with them being supposedly broken and not fixable, but we're here to see if these do anything at all or if they're fixable. Let's start off with the computers, by first talking about their specs. As to what I remember, these PCs have a Core i7-3770 CPU from Intel, i4-4 or 8GB of RAM, 1TB hard drive and inbuilt Intel HD Graphics 4000 as the GPU. As for the GB PC, it has some sort of an Intel Core 2 Duo which doesn't scream much these days, a GB motherboard, no RAM, 250GB of storage and an NVIDIA or ADI GPU of some kind, but I don't know much info about it. We'll find out what that card is, if that thing powers on, or if the GPU shows any signs of life. I'm gonna start off with the Dell machines, and see which ones power on and which ones don't. Opening up the first one, we can see that it has everything inside it, but for some reason, it's got 3 RAM sticks instead of 2 or 4, which I don't recommend you do it anyway because it won't work as it soon unless the system takes tri-channel memory. Anyway, let's plug it in and see what it does. After plugging in the necessary stuff and applying power, the machine greets us with an instant power on to an amber light, which, if you know anything about Dell computers, doesn't mean anything good. So I tried removing the RAM and putting one stick back in. Then the machine behaved differently, its power light blinked twice and then blinked one more time before repeating the diagnostic code, which according to Dell's diagnostic LED reference guide for Optiplex models from 2012 to 2020, means that the motherboard has probably fried itself. Ouch! And yes, I tried the oven method later on and didn't change things, so I scrapped its parts and sent the rest to e-waste recycling. Next up is the second unit. This one showed different behavior on its power LED. The amber light blinks twice and then three more times before doing it again, meaning that we got some bad RAM or RAM with dirty contacts or badly seated RAM. So I removed all RAM sticks and installed just one of the computer's own RAM sticks and this time we got video output on the screen, in the form of an error message mentioning a dead CMOS battery, meaning that the time and date and custom settings on that machine were lost. And after reinstalling the RAM sticks, we can see that it has recognized all 8GB of DDR3-1333 memory, meaning that we can go ahead and see if this thing boots into Windows. But first, we need to make sure that the RAM of that thing works, which is made easy with Dell's diagnostic UFI utility, and after some time, the machine passed the test with success, meaning that we can now boot into Windows, but it ran into a hurdle, as the SATA operation setting has been altered due to the dead CMOS. So, I went to the BIOS and set it to a SATA operation setting that I believe was the one they used when Windows was installed, but no avail. After the Windows logo disappears, the spinning dots still spin, but after a while, the computer black screens and restarts, meaning that the OS has been corrupted to do something, making the OS inaccessible. And next up is the third unit, which didn't seem too promising, because as soon as it powers on, it dies right away. And the same thing happens even with a spare power supply that is pulled out from a broken Dell with the fried board. Turns out the CPU has gotten fried, because when I replaced it with a spare one, it worked. But no matter what I did, it didn't proceed with the boot process at all, meaning that as to what I believe, the computer was hit with a thunderbolt, or the machine decided, you know what, I'm going to fry myself for no reason, frying itself and becoming unusable. So this computer is getting sent to e-waste too. As for the fourth Dell, it had a newer hard drive from November of 2014 and absolutely no RAM. So I put some RAM in order for that thing to function, and it posted first try to a CMOS error. After some BIOS configuration later, I went ahead and booted to its copy of Windows 10, but once I did, the computer went straight to automatic repair, reporting that the PC didn't turn on properly. I pressed the restart button and then the OS started up as it should to an old build of Windows 10 that hasn't booted since early 2020, 
meaning that that machine was last used up until then. The computer works properly. All it needs is proper RAM and a clean install of Windows and we're all set. And the last of the 5 Dells, well, had corrupt BIOS making the system unfixable unless you have a ROM chip programmer, which I don't have, so that PC is unfixable unless the BIOS gets reflashed in some form or another. Now we're done with the Dells, we'll go ahead and see what's up with the Gigabyte PC, which as you saw has its internals tucked inside the case and are not mounted in the right places as it was dismantled two years ago and hasn't been reassembled ever since. Meaning that once you remove the side panel, you're greeted with a mess of parts, which is similar to what I saw in March of 2021 when I got some PCs to test out. So I tried reassembling the PC, having zero hopes about it because of something breaking off on board or something that can cause a major problem on the computer or the GPU. But I still had hope that even if I assembled the machine, then the PC might work. But I didn't think that that would happen. So after reassembling it enough for it to boot, I pressed the power button without any hope, turning on a PC but being stuck on the black screen. So the GPU could be bad or worse, the board is dead. So I tackled with the GPU which somehow got the PC to post after a reboot to an error screen about CMOS error. So after resolving that issue, I rebooted the computer and it got to Windows 7 which is a really old OS nowadays, but for most, it's nostalgia. Revealing that the graphics card is some sort of an ADI Radeon 4300 4500, which is actually an ADI Radeon 4550, judging by the model number on the card's PCB. This machine is normally supposed to run Windows 7, but because I currently had Windows 10 on hand, it didn't see 7 ever again. Anyway, now that I'm done with checking all computers so that I can reinstall Windows and respace their processors and chipsets, we can now go ahead and test out the monitors, starting with the BenQ, whose power cable was broken, so I had to use one of mine, and the monitor powered on without any problems at all. The same thing goes for the ViewSonic monitor, which is an old LED monitor. For dual monitors though, only one functioned right. The other two had degraded backlight or bad power supplies, rendering those monitors useless and e-waste assuming that the backlight is dead. As for the condition, during testing, I haven't noticed anything wrong with the panels on those monitors, meaning that they are fully functional and don't need any repair. Now that we're done with the monitors, we can go ahead and install Windows on those things, which was pretty straightforward. All that's needed is a USB stick and a product key, which those PCs have, so I entered it before proceeding to the next usual steps Windows has and annoys the end user, which were completed with success. All that's left to do is to update the BIOS of the working computers to the latest version and repaste the processing units and chipsets, which in that case wasn't easy as the paste was solid as a rock and that the thermal paste flakes break apart like plaster, meaning there has been a while ever since the last repaste job. Thank god no damage has occurred to the die of the CPU. To clean off the thermal paste from the IHS, I scrubbed it with a cotton bud with isopropyl alcohol after scraping off the dry thermal paste from the sides and edges of it. The same thing applies for the cooler, but it was challenging to clean off all the thermal paste, and it took a ton of time in order to get it all off, even if I used elbow grease. The end result was very good, so I put the CPU back in and put on some Noctua NTH2 thermal paste, which is quite overkill for a PC like this, but that's what I bought, so I used this. As for the offer though, it was the same story. The other PC had dried thermal paste 2 on the CPU, which had to be expected, and the GPU heatsink was stuck to the GPU dial like glue to the dry thermal paste. The CPU and heatsink were cleaned easily, but the GPU and its heatsink, they required some elbow grease, as the paste was solid as a rock, much like the paste on the Dell computers. The paste was so dry that it required a screwdriver in order to remove the old paste from the cooler, and the fan also required a dust out as it was full with dust. And while I was at it, I also cleaned the top side of the card's PCB and the PCIe contacts, thinking that that would remedy the issue of it not working properly unless I wiggled the card. Then I applied some thermal paste and clipped the heatsink back onto the board. The north bridge, same story, but since the south bridge used a thermal pad, the heatsink came off really easy. I repasted both the north bridge and south bridge and clipped the heatsinks back into place. Now, applying thermal paste on top of a plastic tip whose dye is not exposed instead of using a thermal pad isn't really a good option, 
but that's what I did for some reason, thinking that it would be cool efficiently. Then we can go ahead and repaste the CPU and clip on the heatsink before putting the motherboard back into the case and testing out to see if I haven't fried anything up during the repasting process, which thank god I did not. And just like that, this is it. 3 out of 6 computers were fixed and 3 out of 5 monitors work perfectly fine. Some of the issues on the computers were minor and easy to fix and some were major, rendering the computers useless. But these minor issues were easy to fix. All that was needed was some RAM reinstall or new RAM for the Dells which got the backup and running again like if they were just pulled off from the boxes concerning the fact they look spotless cosmetically. This goes to show that there are some people who don't put enough time to diagnose the problem or call someone who knows about those things and instead retire the PC completely because of this even if it's still worth being used by someone else who wants a PC as it's a PC with a 3rd gen Core i7 processor that can still do some sort of video editing work and even play games if paired with a good low profile graphics card. As for the Gigabyte PC, concerning the fact that it's just a Core 2 Duo system, it won't really do any wonders for the modern world, even back when I filmed this video, but it can be still used by someone who wants to turn that system into a retro gaming rig. Anyway, that's it about for this video. Rate the video, comment your opinions, and if you want to support the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button. That will motivate me to create more and better videos for the channel. That's all about it, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.